Oh, oh okay. Okay. <laughs> Today is Thursday, June the 16th. It's also Justice's birthday, too, by the way. Happy birthday, Justice. Happy birthday. <laughs> So he's enjoying himself. I, he turned 27 today. Wow. Yeah, it is, yeah. And your birthday was what, the 9th? 12th. 12th. I was off by a little bit. Um, got a great show today, especially when we start talking about the idea of monetizing the, uh, the talent of individuals. Um, and I think it's going to be a really good show. And I'll explain why, because there's a number of people who I've come across who are always talking about they want upward mobility in their life, and um, but they don't know where to start. Before we get into that, though, I think there's some housekeeping things. First and foremost, I want you to know something. I thought about you. You've been heavy on my heart all week, okay? And, and, and I know that I, I poke at you a lot because I admire you. You know, as an individual. Seriously. Yeah, you know, I mean, um, and um, I've been there. And to a degree, have some feelings and some things that I'm dealing with. But I want you to know um, that uh, uh, I want to reiterate that I'm here for you. I appreciate it. And that we all stand behind you. Yeah. Absolutely. Good. Okay. I appreciate it. All right? Yeah, I mean, I, it could have been a lot worse. Yeah. Um, I think at the end of the day, you know, the way it ended for my father was um, as poetic and as, you know, low pain and suffering uh, as it could have been. And so, uh, you know, I, I certainly appreciate this. Yeah. But I mean, it's, we're good. Okay, sure. Um, okay, so I just, I, I had a crazy week. We're kind of getting back in that full swing with what it is that I do um, as a profession. Um, and so it's just been a hectic week. And I had some stuff that I, that I interacted But I do think that it's important to give people their flowers while they're here because we don't know when they won't be. Now, um... Before we get it right into the meat, and, and we're gonna go and we're gonna go hard because it is a lot of people out there who want to, they want to better themselves. Mm -hmm. They don't know how. They know that a job is just not it. It's, it can't be the stopping point for them in life. And it's not that there's anything wrong with a job, right? Because a job is a means to an end. It pays your bills. Maybe it works around the free time that you have if you have a family. It could be something that you like doing, but specifically there are people who feel like they are more talented than where they are, right? And so we'll get into that. But Mr. Kevin Thornton, yes sir, you are from Ohio. Yes sir. We got to talk real quick. Gun laws in Ohio. Teachers can carry guns now. Yeah. On campus. How do you feel about it? We'll go through that real quick, and we'll jump right into the other stuff. Um, I don't have a problem with that right now because I know a lot of my friends are teachers and they're not safe. And so because a lot of kids are carrying guns and they have, they have a lot of stuff going on in their school system. So, you know, they have to protect themselves. They also be able to protect the kids that's there too. So I have no problem with it. Okay. I mean, uh, I don't have a strong opinion one way or another on it right now. I think that uh, it is it is certainly one thing to try. And the beautiful thing about America is that we are a constitutional representative republic, which means that states can try their own things and see what works. So we'll see how it works. I generally I appreciate these things being tested on the state level before the feds just force it on everybody. I agree with that. Okay. All right. Um, What's your thoughts? Yeah, uh, we're getting there. Okay, so <laughs> I have a mixed feeling about it, right? I think that inherently everybody should have the right to protect themselves. Mm -hmm. And I think that prior to Ohio passing the law, there were things in place that would allow for teachers to 
keep their guns or go through, I think it was like 700 hours of training or something like that. Right. Um, generally speaking, if anybody in general wanted to, because this isn't the first time this discussion has come up, if anybody in general wanted to be able to carry a gun, here's the issue. As a black man, any state that allows us the right to carry, I like, right? You know, what a concealed weapons permit without an actual concealed weapons permit. Because there are things that are disproportionately handed down to us that jeopardize our ability to carry firearms and protect ourselves, right? So you, you won't get a whole lot of uh, blowback from me with regard to that particular issue. However, what I also know is is that the when you're in an environment that's that's gun heavy, I don't see students being in a position of ease. When there are guns around and, and it's not because people are let me just say this. I worked in Atlanta Public Schools. Mm -hmm. What happens rapidly if there's a fight? You got to understand, I wasn't afraid of these kids. I was 35, 36. I was, in, I was extremely bulky in great physical condition. And I could play with them. I could put these kids in a headlock and stuff like that. But I also saw teachers who were afraid of these kids. What happens if a fight breaks out and then panic sets in somebody reach for a bow? It's over, right? I also know that there's a phenomenon associated with a, a mob attack on teachers where somebody could take that gun because the more guns there are there's more access to guns in what should be a gun free environment additionally what do we do about because the adults there are sleeping with other adults there I didn't engage in it but I knew it to be happening at Washington High School one of the places it happens uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Lots of affairs happens at workplaces, um, and wars were started over women. They were historically. Somebody gets upset. It's not about the most dangerous killer is the person that knows that he's not a killer. You don't wake up sometimes. With the, you know what I mean? You don't think, but when you have access to it, so we'll move on. I don't know. It'll be for people to discern whether or not that's an environment that they feel comfortable with. However, I do understand you don't want somebody coming in there with an AR-15 shooting up the place, but the problem with that is is that even a handgun in a lot of instances is not going to do nothing against that anyway. Okay, all right, so right, we'll get into... You probably get on target faster with a handgun. But again, if someone's like kicking the door to your classroom with an AR-15, like, it's easier for them to aim at the teacher first. <laughs> right, because uh, now they know who's got the gun. Mm -hmm. You know, um, and so, I don't know. Um, <laughs> the, the NRA is the big winner here with regard to that. So, um which you have to even wonder why some of these things happen in the first place. But that I'm not going to get into that, you know, because of my uh, conservative position with the party. Now, fast forward. Martin and Gina are um, reconnecting. Did y'all know that? Yep. You heard about it? Yep. Martin. Yeah. It's called, um, it's, it's From called, Martin. From the Martin Show. Tisha Campbell and Martin Payne. Well, Martin Lawrence. Okay. I'm sorry. Yeah. I got... I was thinking about the uh, yeah. the same Martin that wasn't that Martin. I don't think it was too when I hear Martin and Gina. Yeah, so they're doing a reunion show on Juneteenth. Yeah, she dropped the lawsuit and everything. Great, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. yeah, okay. Yeah, it was, I can't, I'm looking forward to watching it. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that, was, uh, that was my show. Yeah, we grew up watching that. Um, with regard to, and then something else happened. Oh, I forget the, the girl uh, uh, that used to date LeBron James before he got married. Drew Sador. Drew Sador. Man, you, you're on top of the gushy stuff. Thank you, Kevin. <laughs> you know, it's, it's, um, it, it's on YouTube. It's all over YouTube. Now, I don't know why that was brought up, uh, because that was a long time ago, and um, he wasn't married at that time, so he's single. So this is free advice to women. 
if you are not married to somebody, they are single. And that doesn't mean that everybody is going to exercise their right to be single. I believe that probably LeBron James is a very faithful man mm -hmm. with regard to, you know, his marriage status. But prior to marriage, obviously he was, look, man, you know what I mean? There's a reason that if, if you might want to think about that. Somebody's not asking you to marry him. I'm not saying they're a bad person, but I'm saying you probably, you're still in an audition phase. And I'm not right. telling anybody that to hurt your feelings. I'm telling you that because that's the truth. And some people that cross over the line, they'll still do it. That's their business. Mm -hmm. They're going to have to deal with God with that once right. they enter into that institution. All right, so um, I just don't understand why she would bring that up now, considering the fact that she's married. Right. And then her husband has to hear about this, too. Right. And the last thing as a man that's with a woman is you want to, last thing you want to think about is who was sleeping with her before you were. Right. And so I don't know. Maybe he's cool with that. I'm not going to get into their business. Okay, um, all right, so I had a, 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 a very nice young lady I had come across um, had said something to me with regard to, um, very nice young lady, smart girl, 34, really, really smart. I had had some communications with her. I used to work with her, sharp girl, never done nothing with her, honest to God truth. And she knew my status. By the way, I am completely single now, so now I can talk freely about it. Okay? And, you know, as of yesterday, you know, and... Congratulations. Uh, I mean, it depends on what eye you look through, but sure, thank you. Okay, um, and so fast forward, um, she says, I said, well, why are you, said, you hit me up? What's been going on with you? I don't know what's going on with you. She was honest and transparent. Here's where we get into what we're going to talk about in terms of monetizing your talent. So she said to me, and this gave me an idea for a great show. I think this would be a wonderful show. How do, you know, people are telling me that I'm built for more. I'm built for more. You know, that I'm a great person. I could be doing more. Mm -hmm. Right? Rewind back a little bit. Why you even been reached out to me? She's like, to be honest with you, and this is the most adorable answer I've heard, by the way, from a very adorable person. And she said to me, um, to be honest with you, when I'm around you, I kind of feel like Jada Pinkett and Blair Underwood and set it off. Like, I get quiet because I don't know what to say. Because I kind of feel uncomfortable because I don't know how to semantically dialogue with you. She didn't say that. I'm in, I'm giving you guys the proper terminology. Right. So that we don't have to, so we can save some wordplay. All right. And I said, wow, you know what? That's one of the keys. Honesty. Being honest and genuine. I'm thinking I'm just a scumbag like everybody else. You know what I mean? But I'm honest scumbag. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's a big difference. Anybody who knows me knows that. But I think I'm a good person inherently. Fast forward. So I said to her, well, what do you like to do? What's your talent? What do you feel comfortable with? And this is where you take out your pencils and write. Let's look at where you are in terms of what you have a natural inclination to do as an individual, mm -hmm. right? Um, Bob Proctor once said that the money that you make in life is going to be tied to, is there a demand for what it is that you do? How good are you at it? And then number three, what's the likelihood of you being replaced? Now, the fact of the matter is, is that there's probably a great demand for what it is that you do. Mm -hmm. um, but if, and if you're really good at it, if you continue to sharpen that blade every day and, and, and better craft your skill, then um, number three will take care of itself. It'll be very hard to replace you, right? right? So we don't ever want to get complacent. But God has given everybody a talent, first and foremost. And we need to, some people are given multiple talents. But you've been given something to work with. Now, with regard to uh, um, that, she proceeded to say, and then I'll let y'all jump in, and I'll keep going down the list, and we can just kick it back and forth. She drives a BMW truck. I said, okay, 
If your truck breaks down, where are you going to take it to? She said, BMW. Why would you take it to BMW? Because they're going to know the best way to fix it. That's right. I said, so when a human being breaks down, where do they need to go to? The thing that manufactured it. God. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. All right, yeah. <laughs> so that's the first thing, the most important thing. And y'all tell me how important is spirituality, not just in living life, but in building wealth. I'll let Rashid go first. <laughs> um, I think there is a connection. Um, I think that. I mean, I guess it. It, it, it sort of depends on what you mean by spirituality, though. Um. I know that, you know, a lot of religious codes instill values and behaviors in people that I think are conducive to, um, you know, being reliable, um, to, you know, not necessarily giving up at the first failure. Um, and so we got consistency. And to do right by people. Right. Um, and I think that those things are... You know, I mean, particularly if you don't have those values and you don't live up to those things, um, I think that it's hard to be successful. Um, and I think we are in a culture that, you know, has a certain set of mores and it is a fundamentally Judeo-Christian value system that this culture runs on um, at the at the core of it. Um, now, we can certainly argue about, you know, certain instantiations of ideology that, you know, live in this culture, um, but I do think it's fundamentally Judeo Christian. Um, and therefore it rewards, you know, things like the Protestant work ethic, right? It, it has there are a lot of assumptions there around what it means to be a full participant that are very religious religious in origin. Um, for me spirituality plays a, a major part in um in all to me, all aspects, even coming down to um, financial situation, because for me, how I see things, you know, how you see yourself spiritually and how you see who you can become and what you can attract to you is going to really dictate what you become. And so a lot of times, all for me, you know, it's the mindset of inside that you are worthy of who you are called to become, but also worthy of the financial blessings that you receive for doing that gift as well. Absolutely. So the, the gift itself, I believe, works paradoxically, right? So the gift that God has given you is actually not for you. It's for everybody else. But it works that you cannot be blessed until you begin to operate in that. And in mm -hmm. fact, you will carry around a void that will leave you trying to fill it with other things that just won't work. Right. Spirituality is an absolute must. And I say that to say, even if you're an atheist and you follow, you can follow biblical laws and not even have the intention on following biblical laws and you still get the benefit that comes along with it. You, I'm sorry. Yeah, I mean that. Well, yeah, obviously, that I was about to say. I mean, obviously, you have people like you know Seth MacFarlane and uh, Bill Mayer and um, you know Richard Dawkins and um, the late Christopher Hitchens, who are all like rabid atheists. <laughs> and um, I think it's it's clear that uh, that they have been very successful. Though it's certainly worth noting that I think Dawkins has recently made some concessions that he felt like. Uh, he, he sees a he understands a place of religion more than he may have maybe 10 or 15 years ago when the big new atheist movement was going down but again I, th I think your latter point just goes to you know the earlier point that by default like if you just like do the things that society expects there are there's a lot of like spiritual underpinning to that a lot of people don't know that Right. They don't know that like half the things they say, um, half the little sayings or whatever, come from the Bible. Right. <laughs> um, right. But I mean, but that's that's what it is. Like it's so ingrained that you just thought it's the whole like fish in the water. Like what's water? You know. Right. Um, right. Right. You just don't know. Yeah. So so absolutely. So there's that phenomenon. I think that being honest about where you are, um, and I, and that's why I appreciate the young lady. Um, 
for for even being honest enough, right? right? Because business people, when somebody is honest with you, it doesn't matter how much you know or don't know, you stand out. Right. Because it's so much smoke and mirrors and BS and the person that sticks out in the crowd is the one that's like, you know what? I'm here. I want to learn something. I don't know anything about what you guys are talking about. And you're going to attract more people that way. So you need to be honest, first and foremost. As well, well, I would say second now. We're talking about spirituality. Be honest. Be genuine. Do what you say you're going to do. If you can't do what you say you're going to do, say, hey, look, I know I said I was going to do this, but I didn't and I couldn't or whatever. Mm -hmm. These things go a long way. Now, with regard to whatever it is that you're talented in, when you begin to understand what you have a natural inclination, do you know it's a guy, man, that makes a million dollars a year, like being the voice of uh, Kermit the Frog on the, you know, when the, the Muppets do like mm -hmm. these late night shows and stuff. That's crazy. Right. That's his talent. Not, yeah, I'm just saying. I mean, yeah. So I mean, everybody got one. You got to harness it. Um, the other thing is, is that I, I've told people this in the past, and most people, and we're giving you this for free, man. We're not getting no money from it, but we want you to succeed. The other thing is that your surroundings. This is where things get a little difficult. I'll let y'all talk about it. if the surroundings that you're in are not conducive to growth. Mm -hmm. You got to let them go, mm -hmm. and it's sad. Yep. Even if it's your mama, you can always come back and get your mama later. Jay-Z said, I can't help the poor if I'm one of them. So your friends need to be people who know more than you, people who are, are better off than you are. There's no way that if you find yourself in a position where you consider yourself proverbially broke, that you should be hanging around other broke people. That's crazy. You need to put yourself in an environment where other people are doing better because you can learn something. Right. If they kick you out, they kick you out. But to not try is just crazy. To sit still and die. You know what I mean? And so your environment is so key. And I didn't understand this as a younger man. That you should always be looking to upgrade. Not upgrade because you're better than anybody. Mm -hmm. But get on a frequency of the people that you want to that you want to be on their frequency right you know what i mean and be in the room you need to be listening there are things that you can pick up sometimes by just being in an earshot how do y'all feel it about was, that? what's funny is some of the some of the men that i coach um that's the part that they struggle with because they're now elevating and they're going to a whole nother frequency but they struggle of not wanting to let the people go and I told them that the, the people that you try to hold on to does not like the new version of you because they fell in love with the old version of you and so the only way you're going to be able to keep that friendship in that is if you dumb down who you are now to be who they are used to being where I'm with right. and so you have to be able to let them go right and because they're in trust that there's other people waiting to so be, befriend you and to know you that can help you where you're going and where, you, where you're striving to become. Because a lot of times, if your friends is not trying to grow with you, you can't hold on to them. Because you, can't, you can always go back and pull them back. back once you get where right. you need to be. Right. But, but yeah. Try to take, try to take them along with you on the road. It's it's not really your responsibility. Your job is to be, you know, be become the best version of you that you could become. And if they want to do that, that's cool. But if not, hey. Yeah, I think I might look at it just a little bit different. Um, I mean, okay, well, hit us with some game, big bro. Is, uh, you know, I think certainly within the modern kind of woke movement for lack of a better term um, you know there's a lot of attention that's put on you know disparities and privilege and things like that and how you know certain groups of people are exposed to 
things that others are not. And that's unfair for that reason. There's no such thing as merit, yada, 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 yada. Um, and there's something to that, but I think that there is less to that right now than there has ever been. Um, because right now, we live in a world where information, which is ultimately the thing, like knowledge is the thing, that's the thing that allows you to transcend, is cheaper and more abundant than it's ever been. Right. There's a, I remember years ago, there used to be this, um, there's this, this website called quickmba.com. Mm -hmm. I remember going to that site and being pissed off. And I was pissed off because the stuff I spent all these years learning in college was like on this website. Right. <laughs> like people just go to the site to learn all the shit that I spent all this time laboring over to learn. Now, I, I don't regret going to college and studying what I study, but the point is just that. Um, your ability to like gain knowledge, you know, before you were a victim of the limited knowledge of your and exposure of your parents. Now you can break away from that. You can go all the way around the world. You can learn from, you can go to MIT <laughs> and learn for free from there. Or there, there are very few things that you can't learn for free. Now you can pay a little bit and maybe have a little bit better experience, mm -hmm. but you can learn all these things free. And so that, and you know, and it's, you know, and I think this is important when you start thinking about, so the specific thing y'all are talking about is about kind of like the social networks that you kind of behold it to as a result of like where you're born, who you're born to. Um, and I think that, you know, you listen to a lot of the discourse, particularly about like radicalization and white supremacy and that sort of thing. And, you know, they identify the fact that people, you know, the whole argument they make is that, oh, well, it used to be if you're a white supremacist, then you'd have to like meet the ones that lived around you, and that was very hard. But now you can like meet a whole bunch of them online, and y'all can white supremacist together. Mm -hmm. um, well, it's the same thing. Like what we're talking about is the same thing, where you can um, be a curious person and have incurious parents, <laughs> and you can go online and you can meet other curious people, and you can create a whole other existence with these people that's beyond what you are physically tethered to. Uh, and I think that's a powerful thing. I think it's important. And it's not to say that what y'all are talking about, that you still can't be dragged down by your, you know, physical environment. You certainly can. Mm -hmm. You live in an unsafe neighborhood, you can still get shot, beat up, whatever. Um, but I do think that, like, the ability to transcend that is just easier than it's ever been. But you're right. If a person does leverage all these um, opportunities that are out there for free online, um, they still have to contend with the physical world. And that can be a frustrating component of how they operate. So uh, one of the things that, um, to your point about merit and this, that, and the third, and I, I mean, merit is, I think that there is merit. I think that there's favor. And then I think that there's will, right? You know what I mean? The human will being the strongest force of all, whether it's merit, favor, um, uh, uh, generationally, gifted, whatever. You know, there's nothing that's going to be will at the end of the day. Now, it'd be great if you had these other things and then you also had the will, too. Uh, you know, I think that that definitely sets you up for a different level of trajectory. but um, when people say to me with what I'm doing now within the, the Republican Party, they have, people have negative things to say and I understand that and that's okay, but one thing I always ask them well, let me ask you something. If you had a chance to be around state senators and U.S. senators and they invited you out, would you not go? Not one person could say with surety, without pausing. First off, there's nobody that has said no. Right. you damn right you're going to go. So you can look at to people who are worried about leaving their friends and being indebted to their friends because their friends have done them a favor. Tyrese talked about this on Monique's show about 10 years ago. Somebody does you a favor, you owe them for like the rest of your life. <laughs> you know what I mean? And uh, Kevin Garnett said when LeBron James went to Miami Heat and left Cleveland, Kev, uh, Kevin Garnett said as somebody who had played in, with Timberwolves, he said, loyalty will kill you came out of his mouth. So, if you got an opportunity, because I'm going to tell you like this, 
you can stick around and kick it with the homies. There ain't nothing wrong with that if that's what you want to do. But if you kicking it with the homies so that you can have this name of being loyal or whatever the hell ever, if they got the opportunity to change their life, they would do it. I can guarantee you that. You know, ain't nobody going to turn down certain networking opportunities. I mean, I think it's a function of just focus on values. I mean, it's what you want and who you are. So, I mean, if if being a person that people of a particular persuasion mm -hmm. like is a thing that you value, then, you know, then that leads you a certain way when you start talking about the sort of stuff that you're doing. Um, but if, like you know, personal advancement or, or advancing other goals or particular goals that, you know, may not specifically align to certain groups that you may have been hanging out with, if that is the thing that is your priority, um, then you may go a different way. I, I, I think you're on to something with that. I agree. The question is, who loves you? Well, like not, not who appears to love you. Because who loves you and who appears to love you are always two different things. I mean, I, so I, I understand where you're coming from, and I don't necessarily disagree. I guess the question I would just ask is, are you guided by other people's perceptions of you, or are you guided by your own internal compass? Correct. Good question. Internal compass? Yep. You do what you do because that's what you feel like you should be doing, and not because... Ex ex and, and so that leads us to the next point uh, about entrepreneurship and about breaking away, breaking out of the mold or the shell that you find yourself in. you got to be a bold person, and you cannot care what people think. And to your point, I think that when you do things for the right reasons, it has unexpected benefits that mm -hmm. come along with it. You know? Right. Um, when you have certain morals that you just think that this is the way that things should be for whatever reason, you know, um, I mean, it's, it's, uh, I heard a guy say, um, a minister say once that success is when preparation meets opportunity. Well, you said success is when preparation, so I've already heard that luck is where preparation meets opportunity. Well, I heard success. But I'm just saying that if you continue to do the same thing over and over again, so then we bring up consistency. You got to be consistent. You know what I mean? Because you never know. that You never know what day your number is going to be called. So you show up. You be diligent. You do what you're supposed to do. You be good to people. Know that you're constantly planting seeds. Understand that in this life that you're looking for a better opportunity, and if you're a good person, somebody is looking for you. Right. You're looking for somebody that's looking for you at the same time. I told a lady one time, I said, if I pull my car over to the side of the road, and because it goes down, right? Mm -hmm. I put my flashers on, you know, and I sit there. Somebody might come help or whatever. They might pull over and say, do you need some help? You might get the hero team, the Georgia DLT, whatever. But if you get out, you put that car in neutral, and you start pushing it, Watch and see how many people start helping you. Watch and see the difference. Start every day being committed to yourself. You know, when we die, we're not going to get another bite at the apple, you know. What are you waiting for? Because if you're good at what you do and you do a job, and you're good, you're probably hard to replace at the job anyway. So if you fail at entrepreneurship, or at what you want to do next, you can always go back and get a job again. If you do your job and you don't burn bridges, somebody will always take you back as a worker. Mm -hmm. You can say, hey, look, I want to pursue this, or you can do this on the side and say, I had an opportunity. I want to take advantage of it to better myself. And you know what? Sometimes I've heard of situations where when people do that, the company already knew the person had value, so they may say, well, listen, we've been thinking about it. What are they offering you? We're willing to offer you this and elevate you here because we want you here. Yeah. <laughs> I don't disagree with anything you're saying. I just think that, because uh, I mean, you're fundamentally talking about like how a market-based economy works. Uh, I think the problem is that uh, there are definitely um, strong currents of 
dissatisfaction with the market-based economy that are flowing through our culture. And I mean, it's, you know, and it's, it's very entrenched in current discourse. I mean, you know, when people, so there's, there's a thing I keep hearing about how like, there's no job shortage. There's just um, employers that don't want to pay people their value. Mm-hmm. Have you heard that? Yep. Yeah. Um, and I guess the thing is that, so I don't, I don't know that people like actually understand their value. So their value is what you taught. So the way I was taught when I studied HR selection, mm-hmm. they have a very simple, simple formula. They call it KSAOs. Your knowledge, yep. your skills, yep. your abilities. And then there's like this other category that just can't, it may catch like your temperament and stuff right. like that, right? Uh, like th- those are the things, and yes, scarcity in the marketplace matters. If you yes, you if you have a job that anybody off the street can do, you're not going to be paid a lot of money. Right. right. And there is there is no obligation for an employer to pay you enough to support your family of four to flip a hamburger. There's just not. Right. Um, now, obviously, government can force companies to do that. I mean, they do force a minimum wage. They can force a higher minimum wage, I guess. And then it's going to be less people working there, too. Yes. Well, you're going to have robots flipping hamburgers. Mm -hmm. um, Because at some point, employers are not going to be um, trying to deal with all that. Um, And so... You gave me an idea for dinner. Well, go ahead. I'm sorry. (laughs) So that's the thing is that I I think that um, there is a lot of disenchantment with, like, how markets work. And and again, like, and the whole minimum wage thing, which, again, a lot of these conversations are broken because, you know, very few people, like, stay at the minimum wage like you get a minimum wage job like you're not in minimum wage probably like five or six months later you right. know like uh, that's not that's not how that stuff works and so I think that and again as you gain experience you're able to leverage that experience in the higher paying roles hopefully mm-hmm. and if you have certain you know mental issues um, and those mental issues could be just low IQ <laughs> like or they could be like you know um, manic depressive or whatever that cause you to lash out or whatever um, but there, but there's certainly a category of people like that that can't that have a hard time moving up because they have a hard time like either getting along with other people or mastering what they're doing and that sort of thing. But for I think most people, you get a job and you you know you learn some things, you move up, you become more valuable. Right. The, the only issue is like, are you learning the right things? Right. Like, is it some dead end thing? Like, are you a travel agent? <laughs> you know. Right. Uh, which nobody really does anymore. Uh, I mean, I, but the thing is that like they're they're like super high end travel agents now. But most people just go to orbits <laughs> or to kayak or whatever, and like you know plan their trips. Right. Um, right. So you do have to be in a sector that is growing, and I think that's the big challenge. Is like right. the economy is constantly evolving. Like when self driving trucks start to push out, you know, long haul truck drivers. Like, that's going to be, I don't think that's coming as quickly as a lot of other people think, but I think that is a risk. And, like, what happens to those truck drivers? Like, what happens to the coal miners? When the Green New Deal, you know, when the the government starts being (laughs) anti-coal, you got to do some of those people, you know? Um, And that's where I think the challenge is, is, like, how can you make sure that you're giving people opportunities to retool? And what do you do with, like, the 50-year-old person that knows nothing else and is not going to, like, learn how to code? Or learn how to use Photoshop or whatever for the next job. Right, 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 right. No, I, I agree. And so I think that one, I, I would say you need to learn a trade in addition to whatever it is that you do. You need to constantly be in a state of knowledge, reading, understanding. Again, that goes with developing even what it is in your craft. Additionally, um, I would say the biggest thing is find a big problem. Most people are hamsters on a wheel. So how did they deal with that? Like the hamster on the wheel, they work, they're continuing in this perpetual state of debt in this cycle to where they're constantly working, they're exhausted, they're eating bad food. Mm-hmm. You, know, they, you know what I mean? They're sitting in traffic, so they're mentally, physically exhausted, their bodies are exhausted. They're not replenishing their bodies with the right foods because they're eating fast foods. These things begin to pass down to their kids. They're not there to effectively monitor their kids. And so then they have problems with their kids. Um, the kids are not eating good foods, you know, um, you know, as a result of this too, which is creating a network of, uh, of, of unhealthy children. I mean, it's just, it's a bad, bad state. Now, I like the original traditional family. Some people just are going to fight this and they're going to buck this to the end. 
you know, and they're going to say, no, I can do it by myself. I know that I can do it, and I'm going to do it by myself. And <laughs> I am not going to go, okay, fine. All right, but I'm, sh I'm showing you what's happening. You know, um, but I think the big thing is finding a problem. Because if you, all you got to do is find a million-dollar problem. You know what I mean? Find a big problem. And when you find a problem, if you have a solution for anything, you have a good idea, you just take it, take a little bit of money, and just continue to multiply that same formula as many times as you can exponentially. But how do they do that? They're a hamster on a wheel, Kevin. They're a hamster on a wheel. How do they even get the time to think creatively? How? Now, some people, I would say that some people have had a, had a year and a half of sitting at home. I'm not going to judge people. I don't know what they did with their time other than watching CNN and being should, scared. Okay, so uh, you it's funny you said that because I remember during the pandemic when everybody like pretty much shut down. I think I had posted that this is the time for everybody to reset uh, relearn and renew um, and you know you, you got people who agree got people who push back um, whatever and so um, for me you know during the pandemic you know I was able to go outside a little bit so what I would do is I would park my car like by Stonecrest Mall and then I would walk the path toward going to the Arabia Mountain and so I didn't have on no headphones, anything. It was just me and nature. That's like the best form of meditation you could go. And that's when a lot of ideas that I want to do for that I'm doing now came to me. So that what I that's what I did to try to do something different or reset or redo for what I want to do for myself. Right. Right, right, right. Is there an option for people who are the hamstrung? Well, how do they get out of that perpetual cycle that they're in? I mean, you know, at the end of the day, you have to invest your way out. Yep. And by that, what I mean is, and again, the you know, the most valuable commodity anybody has is time. And you know, they say that time is money, and that it's a little bit of oversimplification, but I think there's something to that idea. And what I'm really saying is that you know, dedicate 30 minutes a day an hour a day to developing these things. Like, you know, if there's a problem, if there's like something in your life that's a problem that you wish were easier to solve, take some time to figure out how you can solve it. Like, what what would you do? <laughs> you don't have to actually know how to solve it, but just know, you don't have to like, it. maybe it's to solve by a computer program, you have to know how to code. <laughs> but just know how to, that, that it is solvable by code. Or it's solvable by making a thing in the shed, or it's solvable by this, or solvable by a different process, or whatever. And then, when you have the context of a problem that means something to you, then you've got the the impetus to really lean into how you can solve it, how you can create a solution. And I think that kind of investment, investing in yourself and investing in solving problems, because that's again, the economy is built on solving problem capitalism. The fundamental idea behind capitalism is trade and exchange. And the idea is that a person is giving you, usually giving you money for a service that they consider more valuable than the money they're giving you. Correct. If they thought the money was worth more, they would not give it to you. They think the right. money you're giving them is worth more than the money. It's going to save them time you. and convenience. Yes. Right. So, yeah. like, that's, so you are solving their problems. You are making their life easier. Um, and chances are if you see a problem and you have a problem, other people have it too. So I, I, I think that's a good approach. Um, and I think that's the thing is like, just take a little bit of time every day, but be very consistent so it doesn't fall out of your head. Um, but, you know, utilize all these amazing resources that you have. If you don't have internet or on your phone, go to the library. And I know it might be a little rough, but you go to the library, I go to all the time. I see people on those yeah. for free. <laughs> you can do that. That's the thing. Yeah. There's, there's not, you know, time is the thing. You got kids and all that sort of stuff, like maybe be creative. I, mean, I don't know if you got extended family, like, but you're going to have to figure it out because, I mean, nobody's going to figure it out for you. You know, you can stay doing what you're doing or you can be creative and figure out how to move forward. Yeah, and when you do it, it'll definitely be worth it, you know, when you get where you want to be. And so I 100% agree with that. Um, I think that one of the key components, sometimes we have to do addition by subtraction, and that's why. 
we spoke earlier about removing certain people because you'll be surprised at how much little extra time you have if you're not wasting it with certain people. And I think that there's this this fundamental idea that other people want to see you happy. And I don't think that, that intentionally they want to see you unhappy. What do they say? I, they want you to win, but they don't want you to leave. Right. Right? You know, and so because it disrupts their comfort zone, mm -hmm. if you do. And so if you get nothing else out of this, uh, out of what we're talking about, just remember the circle has to change. It's got to change. And it's hard. And one of the, while I already knew this and understood this, when I went out of town on sabbatical, I had to make new friends everywhere. Everywhere. I had to meet new people every single day. I didn't know anybody anywhere. And I talked about some of the, I talked about a lot of the good things, but it was some bad things too. I ran into some places that I didn't want to go into, <laughs> you know, because I didn't know. Now I know if I go back, you know what I mean? Not much right. I intend on going back. I'm saying that to say, um, but when I overcame that fear, Will Smith said this was years ago prior to all of this stuff that's happened with the Chris Rock and all that. He said, some of the greatest things lie on the other side of fear. Yep. And so when I come back, now, I jump into politics. I'm like, wait a second. You know what I mean? Because I said, what if I did this, what can I not do? Right. It was awkward going into those rooms. But I'm telling you, you got to master some fear. You got to be fear. You got to be courageous. Mm -hmm. All right, not fearless. Because courage is moving forward while being fearful. So you're going to have to do it even while you're fearful. Um, so yes, you can find time if you get rid of the stuff that don't need to be there. And I'm telling you, I just, I, I feel so bad for a lot of our sisters out there and the brethren. Typically brethren don't have this problem as much. The brethren do have this problem, but not as much as sisters. There's this, for, this sorority that they have amongst themselves, and they believe that the sister got their back. And when I say the sister, I mean another black woman. It doesn't matter who they are to that woman. Right. But I'm going to tell you like this, sister. If, if, if you got some good help, and they are feeding you information to pull you away from your help, they are not looking out for you. In a lot of instances, as much as we believe that there's this sorority, if they had the opportunity, they would take your shit. It ain't a sorority. I'm telling you. I don't care what people say. If they get the opportunity, they're going to take it. And that way, you're going to know. You're going to know. With regard to the brethren, the brethren typically is, man, you get into a fight, man. I was with you, man, when you got to fighting, you know, and nobody else wasn't there, and uh, this, that, and the third, man, and now you owe them for the rest of your life. I wouldn't pay nobody. I'd be like, just just ask somebody next time they bring up something they did for you. You'd be like, man, that happened like 10 years ago. Just ask them. Be like, man, can you write down how much I owe you for that? See what they say. Just see what they say. Because you don't owe nobody your life. Nobody. So we start there. You start by trimming the fat. And once you get by yourself, you can start thinking a little better. You can start looking at what's more important. And we got to look at what are you feeding your mind every day. So I post a lot of stuff to help people out by like Eric Thomas. Eric Thomas is one of my favorites. I love Eric Thomas. Not You're not familiar with it? Oh, man. I got to say some stuff, man. Why did you say that? <laughs> I mean, I know you're Yoda and all wise and all knowing. You know who Eric Thomas is. Don't you? I do. I'm a fan. Yeah. That's no comment on him. I just. Yeah. I'm sure he's great. Yeah, oh, he's wonderful, <laughs> man. He's, shoot, man. I get pumped up in the morning listening to Eric Thomas. You know what I mean? So, what are you feeding yourself? You got to feed yourself positive things. You got to feed yourself good things. You got to feed yourself new ideas. That goes along with constantly getting new information, right? You know, you, you have to do this. This is a must. There's nobody 
who makes it that is not continually learning because like you say capitalism is constantly evolving all right you know um okay pursuit of happiness mm -hmm. chris garner what did he sell the guy will smith played the guy yeah what you know what he sold i know what he sold it was like a bone marrow scanner or something like yeah. that yeah it's their outdated machines he was rendered helpless when they went out. Look, evolve. You got to evolve. You got to move with the times. Forbes wrote an article in 2010 that said that companies who make it are the companies who learn how to transition quickly. You, if you have an LLC, or you will have an LLC, and I suggest you get an LLC, or S-Corp, C-Corp, whatever you decide you want to do, you are, by virtue of having a Social Security number, you are a company. You need to learn how to evolve. But you can't evolve watching Love and Hip Hop. You can't evolve watching Housewives of Atlanta. There's no nutritional value to it. I get it. Maybe it's, in fact, not, not it's, it's poison, actually, to be straight up honest with you. And that's not me being judgmental. But, uh, you know, I talk to people, and people say they want change. People say, hey, man, can you help me out? Can you give me? I got to teach you a lot of stuff. And it's not going to happen overnight. People are like, I'm behind. I had somebody come to me, and they behind two months on their rent. Can you help me? No, man, it took me years to get here. All right. Even if I start teaching you, you're not going to yield them kind of dividends overnight. You want change? You got to change everything. Right. You got to do the whole thing. Spirituality, environment, positive thoughts, all of that. Get rid of debt. Big thing. Mm -hmm. Especially now. Going on. Yeah, it's nothing wrong with having nice things, but you got to be able to afford them. Especially to the brothers. Look, I'm going to tell you something. Because I know how the brethren think, so I can talk to the brethren. Get rid of your debt. I have been in positions where I was driving in a pickup truck now that is I have completely redone. But at the time, it wasn't redone. The AC didn't work, and it was the middle of the summer. Mm -hmm. And I could still get girls, okay? You're going to be okay. Let the beam go. Let the beamer go. These people don't care about you. Mm -mm. Your image, in fact, is probably hurting you. The expectations are probably higher on you. Because you have these things. Because if I pull up in an old Silverado with no AC in it, ain't nobody asking me to take them to, uh, what is that, STKs? They think I don't even have the money. You will get, you still going to get it. You still going to get yours. Go to Marshall's. You ain't got to go to Phipps. I'm trying to help y'all, man. Get rid of the debt. It's not going to do you any good. You act like these people, man, they, when they go home, they like, man. Every time they see you, like, man, wasn't that a nice car that he had? Ain't nobody thinking about you. If you can afford it, you can afford it. But you need to be able to comfortably afford. If you can't, let it go. Hell, I want to start some business. I'm thinking about selling some of my stuff. I can go back and get some more stuff later, man. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? I can't talk to you about nothing I ain't been through. We done been there, haven't we? I've not had a car since 1999. I've never had a problem getting one. <laughs> I'm sure I've been looked over by some. <laughs> but that might have been a good thing. Wait, the ones who looked over you. Sure. Yeah, yeah. There are way too many others out there that didn't care. So I'm just saying, I mean, that stuff. Don't mean. Yeah. You know, so, I mean. You I, take care of the fundamentals, everything else will come. Absolutely. Yeah. So, I don't know. I just, I, how much, JoJo, what we looking like? All right, let's do this. Final thought. Um, I want to say something. Now, let y'all do y'all final thought, and we'll let Les uh, come, uh, bring us out with the video. Um, when you get there, and you will get there, 
you find yourself flying first class, man, on flights and stuff, sitting next to Italian businessmen, and you're going to love your life. You're going to get there. Maintenance. The park. Maintenance. Maintenance is key. So, some people, some of you can find good things, man. There's a lot of good, I, I like Mercedes, everybody like Mercedes, BMW, Jaguar, Audi, Aston Martin, whatever your flavor is, Porsche, whatever. If you do not put gas in it, you do not get the oil change, you do not wash it, you do not get the brakes done, you do not tune it up, you're going to lose it. It's going to deteriorate. Now, that is just a possession. But if you get somebody good, you get a good spouse, and that is not your number one priority, you're going to lose them. Anything that you do not maintain in your life, you are going to lose. And it needs to be priority number one. Any final thoughts for Let's Carry Us Out? I'm good today. Yeah, and no, I think uh, I think the stuff that Larry talked about is uh, very important. Yeah, you know, priorities and the the little things, the small things. If you can free up just a few minutes per day consistently, it'll take you a long way. Just like if you can save a few dollars a day, it'll take you a long way. East Point smokes dang. National got the skanks. <laughs> In the Far East, they have something that's called. The Chinese bamboo tree. The Chinese bamboo tree takes five years to grow. And when they go through a process of growing it, they have to water and fertilize the ground where it is every day. And it doesn't break through the ground until the fifth year. Okay? But once it breaks through the ground, within five weeks, it grows 90 feet tall. Now the question is, does it grow 90 feet tall in five weeks or five years? The answer is obvious. It grows 90 feet tall in five years. Because at any time, had that person stopped watering and nurturing and fertilizing that dream, that bamboo tree would have died in the ground. And I can see people coming out talking to a guy out there watering and fertilizing the ground that's not showing anything. <laughs> hey, what you doing? <laughs> You've been out here a long time, man. <laughs> and the conversation in the neighborhood is, you growing a Chinese bamboo tree, is that right? <laughs> yeah, that's right. Well, um, even Ray Charles and Stephen Wonder can see ain't nothing showing. <laughs> you know that's how people are gonna do you? So how long have you been working on this? How long have you been working on your dream? It's good. And you have nothing to show. This is all you got to show? People are gonna do that to you. And some people, ladies and gentlemen, they stop because they don't see instant results. It doesn't happen quickly. They stop. Oh, no, 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 no. You've got to keep on watering your dream. And when it began to happen, they stopped laughing. They said, look. Whoa, look, look here. It's, look, look up. Hey, man, you know, I know you could do it. Look here, you got a job here? <laughs> see, t during those hard times, we didn't know how you're going to make payroll during those times when you fail and, and, and things didn't work out. They were, they were nowhere to be found. But know what I discovered? When you're working at your dream, somebody said, the harder the battle, the sweeter the victory. Oh, it's sweet to you. It's good to you. Why? See, when, you, when it's hard and there's a struggle, see, what you become in the process is more important than the dream. That's far more important. The kind of person you become, the character that you build, the courage that you develop, the faith that you're manifesting. Oh, it's, it's something that you get up in the morning, you look yourself in the mirror, you're a different kind of person. You walk with a different kind of spirit. And people know that you know what life is, that you have embraced life. You knew it was hard, but you did it hard.